Thank the gentleman from Georgia, the gentleman from Montana. Mr. Rosendale, I recognize for five minutes. Thank you very much, Chairman Gosar, and thank you very much for holding this hearing. Uh, the impact of international cartels on my home state, particularly the tribes in my district, is immeasurable. We're witnessing a distressing surge in addiction and crime reaching unprecedented levels in the Treasure State. I want to acknowledge President Stiffarm and Mr. Kirk for making this long journey here to our nation's capital to share their insights and firsthand experiences regarding this alarming trend. The escalation of addiction, crime, and the loss of lives in recent years is intolerable. And I hope that this hearing will light a fire under our federal agencies to take meaningful action against the cartels which continue to inflict harm in our state and in our reservations. Moreover, I hope this hearing will be a wake-up call to my colleagues across the aisle, helping them to recognize the unconscionable effects of President Biden's open border policies. These policies have clearly not only impacted border communities, but are felt across the entire nation. President Stiffarm, it's, it's great to see you again, and, and thank you very much for, for attending. Uh, and Mr. Kirk, congratulations on 12 years of sobriety. Very proud of you. President Stiffarm, can you provide your insights into the number of drug-related incidents your officers and federal agencies encountered in Fort Belknap in 2023? Thank you for the question. And I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but these officers, they, they encounter them pretty much on a daily basis. And the remoteness of our reservation and the access to get into the, the remote areas is, is pretty easy for these cartels to come through. There's back roads from um, the Rocky Boy Reservation to Fort Belknap, and that's one of the routes they take. And that's why I'm so disappointed in the um, FBI and the Border Patrol for not assisting the tribes and uh, trying to combat this, um, this drug uh, issues that we have. And, and more importantly, you know, the one of the issues that we really address is we don't have uh, criminal jurisdiction over any of these people that bring in these drugs over non-members even cartel members who don't have a criminal jurisdiction over them, so our hands are tied if we do catch any of these people, you know, and it's, if we do and we call for the Border Patrol or, or the FBI, officers have to sit there probably a few hours for them to get on scene to, to, to even do anything. So, so the cartel knows this. That's why they come here. That's so why they come to our homes. Do, do, if you don't have those numbers, do you have any kind of, of uh, estimate on what type of increase that you have seen on this type of activity over the last couple, three years? Well, the increase is, uh, is mostly in, in fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, methamphetamine there for quite a while. You know, and then they're bringing in fentanyl, which is a lot more easier and a lot more uh, expensive. You know, like uh, Councilman Kirk said, you know, down in uh, the southern border, you know, it's, it's pennies on a dollar, but you get up into Montana, you know, it's hundred dollars a pill sometimes you know for these people to get but they bring it in for the money they bring it in because they can hide in they blend in easily so they bring in a lot of that fentanyl we had uh, we almost had an overdose on, a, on an employee right on a work site you know so they're bringing it in to our staff and they normally if you're not a user and they want you to be a user they'll they'll spike your drink with it and get you hooked that way also so recently a lodgegrass woman was sentenced to 24 years in prison for intent to distribute meth and conspiracy to commit money laundering involving activities in both the Crow Reservation and, and Fort Belknap, among other areas. What steps is the tribe taking to prevent tribal members from being exploited by these dangerous cartels for the drug trafficking operations? Well, we didn't really have any opportunity to take really any steps because of the lack of funding. We're trying to just enforce it and prevent it. The only steps that we probably have is, you know, we have the CDC, which is uh, always underfunded, and the old social services program is always underfunded. It's basically the lack of funding, you know, that's um, preventing us from doing anything in our Indian country, you know, and our law enforcement is um, a 638 contract with the BIA, and we took that over in 1997, and the base funding is 1.2 million. 2023, our base funding is 1.3 million, increased 100,000 dollars in 20 plus years 
I would squeeze one more question safety. in, uh, President Stiffarm, before I lose my time. Do you believe the FBI is adequately prioritizing efforts to prevent and prosecute such illicit activities on our reservations and the surrounding areas? No, they don't. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I yield back. And again, thank I, you so much for attending. I thank the gentleman from Montana.